Hello, BookTube. We're coming up on BookTubeathon 2018, and although I watched Ariel Bissett's fantastic videos, she's brimming with enthusiasm, as always. This is her baby. This is her child. Uh, for this event, and although I've watched other people's TBRs, most recently Sean the Book Maniacs, for some reason, the penny never dropped that I would might make a video of my own. <laughs> I am a big fan of BookTubeathon. Uh, so uh, that's what this is. I the the uh, dates this time are Monday, July 30th to Sunday, August 5th. Uh, and just to, I consider it to be uh, BookTube's most inviting readathon. And Arab Bissett does the whole nine yards: the the hashtags, the social media, the reading sprints, the prompts, the video challenges, everything. Uh, but uh, there are uh, there are seven uh, just ordinary reading challenges. And the first one is to let a coin toss decide your first read for the BookTubeathon. And uh, initially, because I'm a cranky old man, I thought, well, that's anathema. <laughs> you don't, you don't, despite despite the near universal presence of mood readers on you, on BookTube, you don't let mood dictate what you're going to read. At least I don't. If you're, if you're whole bread and butter, if everything you do is books, then you don't just wander lonely as a cloud over one landscape or another without hither, thither, and yawn with no foresight. Uh, and flipping a coin to decide your next book seems like a weaponized version of mood reading. It seems like I'll just, I don't have a preference, I'll just go by random chance. Uh, that was my initial reaction. I didn't want to be a crabby pants. So when the time comes on uh, July 30th, I've got the, the notes right here for it. On July 30th, I will flip a coin. Uh, first thing in the morning to decide the first book I read that day. No idea what it will be yet. It'll, it'll be from, uh, if it's July 30th, it'll be from the stack of uh, finished copies for the final week of the month, probably, if not uh, the stack of advanced copies for the final week of August. Um, one way or another, it'll probably be a straggler by, by July 30th. Uh, and then uh, prompt number two is to read a book on, about something you want to do. <laughs> and there is something I want to do. If you watch this channel, you know what it is. It's my little garden. I have a tiny little garden patch that I lost my nerve to do, I, I think I came to it too late, or I came to it in early summer instead of early spring. So I lost my nerve to try my hand at gardening it this year. I've been told that I could compost it, that I, oh, not compost it, but that I could start creating compost and using, getting that ready for preparing the ground uh, even now. But in, I am determined that I am going to study and read and learn and get advice uh, all went along, and then make that little patch of ground a garden uh, in the early spring. Turn over the ground, pull everything up, get everything ready. I'll get everything ready so that I don't feel like I'm hurrying just to get uh, to, the, to the starting line. And because that's the thing I want to do, it'll be this. This will be what I will read. I just recently found a finished copy, or a finished copy, good lord, a hardcover of Onward and Up in the Garden by Catherine White, and it's a classic of gardening essay. It won't help me in practical terms with making a garden. Uh, but I just found it, and I, I've been, you know, when I find keepers like this, classics that I absolutely love, uh, I make a point to reread them. So I will do that for, for a book too with on because it's it's a, definitely a book about someone doing something that I want to do. Uh, the next one is uh, number three, prompt number three, is read and watch a book-to-movie adaptation. Uh, and I, the, the prompt doesn't get any more specific than that, so, you, you know, you're not you're not specifically told that either one of them has to be new ground for you, uh, which is just as well. Uh, but I, in this case, I can manage it. Uh, I have a screener for a movie called Beautiful Boy, which is directed by Felix Van Groeningen, uh, and it's adapted from two books, The Memoir of a Father, who uh, temporarily lost his son to uh, methamphetamine addiction, and The Memoir of the Son, his addiction memoir. The father's book, uh, David David Sheff is the author's name, and he his book is called Beautiful Boy, and that's the one I've read. But I didn't even know at this point, don't know how it happened, I didn't even know that his son, Nick Sheff, wrote a book about his own experiences called Tweak. Uh, I imagine that both books will be reissued uh, with movie art on the cover. Uh, the movie stars Steve Carell and uh, the insufferable Timothy Chalamet uh, from uh, Call Me By Your Name, and... Uh, I get the impression I haven't I haven't seen I haven't watched my screener I've only seen 
you know, the trailers online for the movie. And in the trailers, it looks like Steve Carell is going to turn in a rock solid performance and that Timothy Chalamet is going to do his best young De Niro. I could be wrong about that. I hope I am. <laughs> One way or another. I have, that actually forms a book movie adaptation pair that in both cases I have not experienced. I have not read Tweak and I have yet to see the screener for Beautiful Boy. So I will do that for, for this prompt and I'll wait to do it until Book Two is on, is, is on. especially since I'm curious to know. Uh, if I'm, am I going to have to download a copy of Tweak, or or am I going to be sent a copy in the due course of time? Uh, and then we shall see whether or not it adheres to the Steve Donahue eighty twenty rule that movie adaptations are almost always better than the books that they adapt. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, then prompt number four is read a book with green on the cover. It's another one we've seen on this channel. It's this, Let Me Tell You by, per by Shirley Jackson. It's a collection of her, her uh, essays and occasional writing, columns that she did, that sort of thing. I dipped uh, a toe in it when I, fi I found it just recently the other day. And it's beautiful, beautiful finished copy with the, the deckled edges and a built-in bookmark. Uh, just a lovely thing that I somehow didn't have. When it, when it, I remember when it came out and people were talking about it, writing about it, and it never came to me and I never thought to get it. Um, and then I found it the other day for, for virtually free. And I dipped a toe into it, just a, a couple of things, but as time goes on, I like this woman's writing her tone more and more. And I have a feeling that will apply extra to her nonfiction. So uh, that will be my book with, uh, with green on the cover. <laughs> Although you'll see it could apply to two books here. Then the next one is, uh, prompt number five is read a book while wearing the same hat. I have uh, just a National Audubon Society baseball cap I, that I got free with a subscription. I like it because it doesn't say anything on it. It's just the stitched white pattern of a heron in flight. Uh, it doesn't say National Audubon Society on it. I mean a big blaring logo. So, And I wear that to keep the sun off my head when I'm out with long, on long rambles with Frida Bean. Uh, and obviously I'm not going to read a book while I'm out on a long ramble with Frida Bean. Uh, so I will either wear that hat inside while I read a book, or maybe I will read an entire book outside with the hat on with Frida. You could just go to the Arboretum, go to find some extremely isolated upland meadow and just hang out. I don't know that she'd be very good at hanging out. She does not like unauthorized movement. <laughs> Anything around her that doesn't have her permission to move, she tends to want to reprimand, <laughs> whether it's a bug or a flying leaf or a bird, God help us. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure if she could turn that off if we were in a meadow and she were just next to me uh, on the bowl of a tree. Uh, but maybe I'll give it a try. I haven't been to the Arboretum. If I do that, I will certainly film it. Uh, but I know what the book is going to be. The book is going to be this, the, the latest by the great David Quammen, The Tangled Tree, uh, Radical Hit, New History of Life. I read uh, an electronic copy, but I haven't actually held it in my hand and turned the pages. And it, if you, until you do that, you don't really know how a narrative is moving. At least I don't. I don't have any sense of how a narrative is moving and unfolding in an electronic copy. Electronic copies for me are mainly about just consuming, uh, except in, in rare instances. But uh, in this case, I, I read it. I thought it was brilliant. I think everything this author writes is brilliant. He's just incredible. He's an incredible teacher, an incredible popularizer of science and natural history. Uh, and this is all about uh, the, the hitherto un, unseen complexities in the mechanics of natural, of natural selection. Uh, maybe the transference and the, and the inculcation of genetic information, not through reproduction. <laughs> I, and I, I'm fascinated by it. I, uh, I think there were, there were long patches that I think went right over my head. So I'll be, I'll be looking forward to reading it again, and then I'll read the finished copy one more time. If there's any author that needs three readings, it's this guy. Uh, and that will be the book that I wear with a hat on the whole time, because <laughs> I'm not getting any books on herons. As far as I know, I'm not getting any books on herons this year. Uh, that would be perfect, because the, the heron is on the cap, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I will read this, uh, whether it's outside or uh, here in this little book room. I, I, I put to you that uh, I think that most people, I don't think I'm being a, you know, a, a shut-in here. I think if most people had a, a completely cozy, book-lined little book room with an incredibly comfortable pre-World War One couch or bed or whatever this is, this narrow little thing, this cot, 
Uh, and an, an affectionate puppy laying on your belly, snoozing on your belly, occasionally wanting to lick your face. I think, I think a lot of people, if given that environment, would probably read everything in here and not venture outside, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, and then um, the prompt number six is to read a book with a beautiful spine. Uh, and this is, I don't have, because I, I mostly read advanced copies, none of my spines tend to be beautiful. But I have one that counts, it's a, it's a finished copy, uh, it's this, Trees in Art by Charles Watkins. And all it is, I mean the spine is as pretty as the rest of it, all it is is just a history of the various, of various paintings of trees in art <coughs> throughout the ages and throughout all cultures. And I haven't, I haven't dipped into it yet, so that will be what I do. Uh, and then prompt number seven is read seven books. And I think I can manage that. <laughs> so, uh, what, how many do we have here? I'll read, I'll read Tweak, that's one. I'll read uh, Let Me Tell You by Shirley Jackson, that's two. I'll read The David Quammen, that's three. I'll read Trees and Art, that's four. I'll read Onward and in the Garden, that's five. Uh, and then the other, I will, I will let a coin toss decide what I read. It won't be any of these, it'll be something else. Uh, and that'll, I'll add one more on top of that. But anyway, that is my uh, my book Tubathon, my book Tubathon experience for this for this time around. And I'd love to hear if you're joining book Tubathon. I've watched a whole bunch of videos from people who think they might. Uh, book tube, uh, book readathons uh, come thick as flies this time of year. Uh, but <clears throat> this is one I want to do, and uh, I'm curious to know if, if uh, you're doing it too. So let me know, uh, and I'll I'll wrap this up for now. But I'll see you soon. Thank you, book two.